Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. We're now already in December after 14 days, and I'm sorry I had to miss all that, because for the past two weeks, I was running down a fever. Yes, it's the cold and flu season, as usual, and with every year, especially in December, where you get a really hectic cold weather and then everyone gets sick really bad so they have to rest at home take some medicine that they prescribe from their doctors or and maybe get some medicine from the pharmacy and then you have to rest for like a couple days maybe even a week or so in order for you to finally get better for sure yeah well my last review was a Christmas comedy, which is a real and true sequel to the 1983 Christmas uh, comedy classic, uh, A Christmas Story, with, indeed, A Christmas Story Christmas, which came out on HBO Max, available for streaming. Yeah, as we all know, you know, Ralphie joining in with his family, you know, the old man who's the father, his mom, and his brother, uh, Randy. <laughs> Only this time, he's now an adult. He has his own family to join. And now they had to stay over with his mom to his old childhood place. Um, he also got to visit his old friends again. Meanwhile, his brother, Randy, is spending his time in India for for vacation but he will come back for a visit for Christmas so he began to find out that his father passed away so he has to write an obituary meanwhile he has to send out a novel that he worked on from every single publisher but they always turn him down so yes he had to spend time over there you know try to grab a Christmas tree get some presents you know, hang around, have some casserole that his mom made, so on and so forth, and so a lot of trouble goes around. <laughs> but it's a great sequel and a pleasant surprise for me, and I didn't expect this was going to happen, but I'm glad it did because it totally erased Ebby Fane 10 years ago with A Christmas Story 2 that was a direct-to-video sequel. Uh, the less we we said about that film the better yeah that's for sure so anyway so during those two weeks I was gonna do another movie review to join in with it but then suddenly I was running down a fever and I wasn't the only one my mother and my sister started getting colds too so we ended up going to urgent care and we had a checkup, and we found out what we got because, you know, we had a headache, a sinus congestion that was with, that's affecting our noses. Yeah, we, our bodies were aching. We had a stuffy nose. We started sneezing, and, and then we started coughing, too. All this mucus was coming right out. Ugh. It was horrible. That, so we ended up getting prescribed uh, with some more medicine that we need um, at a local pharmacy and then it went to CVS and then then um, we had to stay home and rest so that way you know the fever will finally come down um, our immune system will, will soon get better we just had to drink plenty of fluids while taking the medicine and eat some food to join with it too so that way it'll, we won't get an upset stomach and all. So we had to spend time resting. We were watching something. Or sometimes I go on the computer to check to see what's going on. Even though I'm, I'm probably not going to be on for a little while. So I'll just take a break. But I did, have, however, continue to post some commercial breaks. You know, just in case so I could stay active. Make sure, you know, I, I am alive and well. And so is my family. Well, finally, uh, we we've been we've been covering ourselves, you know, with warmies too, and 
we did put on the heater I mean I put the heater on in my room so that way it doesn't feel really cold and, and freezing so now I can finally keep myself warm and toasty you know wearing a sweater or a jacket meanwhile I, I lay down and, and just rest I mean I sometimes sweat a little bit too but nevertheless and, and yes I did take a shower so now I'm getting better and I'm glad I am even though and I've been taking some medicine um, I may get a little bit of like a little bit of mucus and maybe a little bit of a runny nose because of this wetter but it's going away eventually and I'm not feeling anything going around I'm not coughing that much so that's good to know so let's pray that we finally get a Christmas that we've been waiting for you know hanging around with the family we're gonna give them all the gifts that we just got for them and then hopefully we'll get to do something for sure and let's hope we, we, we get ready for the new year which is 2023 you know we'll try out some new clothes and all and and hopefully we'll we'll have a better year this time because 2022 well we had some good times and some bad but it is pretty rough and kind of lousy if you ask me but whatever anyway well i i guess for for our sake of being though i mean despite of some good stuff i mean it is pretty lousy i'll, I'll i'm gonna say this right from the bat okay <laughs> all right uh with that aside um i'm finally gonna do a new movie review after waiting for so long you know two weeks just gone by so fast but I'm just happy everything's gonna get better um, I just saw a brand new Christmas comedy yeah it's a musical too um, this time it stars Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds uh, together in the tradition of Charles Dickens a Christmas Carol only this is like a a rehab center for all the folks around who are all acting like Ebenezer Scrooge so, of course, you know, you get Jacob Marley to join in with the Ghost of Christmas Present, uh, who's probably the leader of, of the game, to join with with the past and the yet to come. So now they're going to try to help out all of these surely pompous uh, people around to finally go back to being themselves, uh, all happy and joy and not do any of this nasty stuff at all you know that sort of thing <laughs> so the movie is called spirited um, just came out on apple tv plus it was released in selective feeders uh, on november 11 of this year but it just came out uh, streaming on november 18 so it is available and it's from the director who gave us um the daddy's home movies you know that Will Ferrell was in, and um, uh, We're the Millers, uh, along with um, Sex Drive, and, and I believe he wrote uh, the very first uh, Hot Tub Time Machine. Uh, he didn't write the, the sequel, um, but he has done other comedies that he go on for. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well... This was something I didn't expect it much, but hey, I had to check it out because, you know, Ryan Reynolds has been doing a lot of comedies lately, too. Though I haven't seen a comedy with Will Ferrell for a while, so it's been some time. Uh, and I know both of them had done some Christmas comedies before. Well, Will Ferrell did Elf, but he also did Daddy's Home 2, because that, too, is a Christmas comedy. On its own and Ryan Reynolds did uh, Just Friends so that was another one <laughs> um, and yeah yeah uh, once upon a Deadpool come to mind but was there another Christmas movie he did though? I don't know I I did mention these two though but whatever but I know Ryan Reynolds has been doing a lot of movies lately, too. I mean, with Netflix coming around. 
um, especially the the most recent film with uh, the Adam Project. But I know he also did the Free Guy, and he did which that's of course a movie that came out in theaters from from uh, Disney. Uh, come to mind, and but he did it, do a comedy um, with Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. Um, as well as uh, Gail Godot called uh, Red Notice, and that came out last year, too. And he did Six Underground by Michael Bay. I mean, he, he's done a lot, no doubt about it. So it's like, I'm always in for something fresh. And also, good for a laugh. So anyway, having to see both of them together is just an icing on the cake, so I know this is going to be fun. So... Here we go. <laughs> it stars Will Ferrell, once again, with Ryan Reynolds, Octavia Spencer, Sunita Manny, who she was in the TV show called Mr. Robot that's on USA Network, and she was in the show uh, Glow that was on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Page, uh, Marlo Barkley, uh, Nico Terazui, Thomas P. Gillis, uh, Lorraine G. Woods, Tracy Morgan, yes, Tracy Morgan, the comedian from Pretty Rock, and he was a former cast member of Saturday Night Live, uh, Amy Carrero, Joe Tippett, um, Andrea Anders, uh, Jen Tulloch, P.J. Byrne, Rose Byrne, um, Gavin Maddock, Birchman, and yes, she even got Jimmy Fallon making a cameo appearance, uh, joining in with uh, actress uh, legendary uh, Judy Dench. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Cray West. And it's written, who also directed the movie, but it's co written with uh, John Morris. So, of course, based on A Christmas Carol by uh, Charles Dickens and it's directed by uh, Sean Anders. The movie begins set nearly two decades ago. We meet the boss of this entire rehab center type in the tradition of Charles Dickens' uh, A Christmas Carol who's uh, very handsome, very gentle and all, named Jacob Marley played by Patrick uh, Page, who joined in with a team of afterlife spirits, including three of these guys and gal, <laughs> of course, but it's free. Uh, the ghosts of Christmas past, the ghosts of Christmas present, and the ghosts of Christmas yet to come, or just future. Yes, and the middle is the leader of the spirits. Um, of course, his name that he came up with is Roberto, not Brad Pitt, uh, as he just said in, in his narration. <laughs> um, but he's played by Will Ferrell. Uh, the Christmas Pass, his real name is Bonnie, and she's played by Sunita Mandy. And also, yet to come, who's played by Loran G. Woods. Um, it looks like the Grim Reaper, you know, wearing the black coat, and you can see it's, it's underneath the coat is, is his entire skeleton body. We only get to see his hand, pointing fingers and all. <laughs> but he's voiced by Tracy Morgan himself. Um, there are times when he doesn't speak, but then there are other times he does have his wise cracking voice. <laughs> well, anyway, and they all have their coffees, you know, just like the Starbucks, you know, they have their names on there, and they, they choose what they want, you know, like they have, like, cafe lattes, mochas, you know, hot cocoa, or plain coffee, you name it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Marley had led the team of afterlife spirits in order to help them find and redeem one new human soul around, where everyone acts pretty much like Ebenezer Scrooge. On Christmas Eve, all surely pompous and nasty. 
until they started to change their ways by showing them all their past, present, and future memories that are going around until they finally change themselves for the better. So they become more happy and joyous. And they get to hang around with their friends on, on Christmas Day. Yeah. Until they show up. And that's where they have a dance number. You know, it's a musical. Yeah, there's a lot of songs in this movie. But one of the songs is that Christmas morning feeling. So this is almost like a, a musical edition. That's where you have the director... Uh, joining with the entire crew and they did their own reactions and all and Inside this entire room. It just looks beautiful. It, it's like an office building for sure uh, They have all these uh, Files around they have their computers mostly Apple product computers and iPhones too uh, But inside the room, I mean you see all the people around all in statuettes um which then you get to see like this one um, globe that has all these pop-ups of, of Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram stuff. Yeah, all, all this internet uh, negativity that you're seeing up. All the hates around. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but there's a lot of pop-ups of, of internet stuff on in the movie. Because that's what it is. What we go for. <laughs> That's on smartphones and all that stuff. Okay. Anyway, Roberto has been eligible for retirement after spending his entire 46 year helping all the folks around, which is decades, but refused to do so because he's been tempted by a promise of settling down and making up for all of his own failures that he had in his life. And this is like a dark secret that's coming around, but more to follow. Okay, so finding a new soul to redeem, maybe to take over for sure, uh, the spirits had encounter a young or probably older uh, controversial media consultant named Clint Briggs, who's played by Ryan Reynolds, um, who figures this would be the answer, even though they were going to take the boss at this hotel because he was performing a... Uh, a charity event uh, of Christmas trees. <laughs> so they're hoping Roberto wanted to choose him because this will be the right uh, ripple effect that this guy would, would actually become the redemption by forcing him to have human positivity in his life. So that way he'll be the answer to our problems. Unfortunately, though, um, Marley's uh, assistance to them redeems that uh, Briggs is an unredeemable soul. So that means, uh, yes, um, he won't be able to be the one to choose to, to change. Which, that's, the, that's where it leads to all the problems that's going around in his entire life. But, yes, because he can be a jerk. But at times he can be nice, but he is indeed a sarcastic uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, the ghosts decided to uh, begin a year of research on him so they can prepare themselves for the annual haunts on Christmas Eve that year, for this year alone. <laughs> so by the time uh, that arrives, uh, they visit Clint's headquarters as they witness... Him instructing his niece, uh, named um, Wen, who's played by Marlo Barkley, who wishes to become class president, but her grades have been tanking. And at that rate, um, she posted an unflattering but really uh, nasty video of a classmate where he was at the rescue mission helping out all the homeless people with his father. And it kind of lead to the fact that, yes, it caused a lot of hate going around on the Internet, especially Instagram. And, and they just started to post a lot of negativity towards him. And then this is where it's going to lead to 
Well, a death sentence. So this was enough for him. This was enough for her to to finally win the the classic election at school. But that's where Clint's assistant, Kimberly, played by Octavia Spencer, who Roberto eventually falls in love with, for sure. Um, she discovers the video at his instruction, but felt totally guilty about it, that she was planning to quit until Roberto eventually spotted her, and now she begins to see him. Yes. So they had to start the assignment, but quickly goes uh, completely haywired when Clint eventually got interrupted by Marley. And yes, because that's where he was performing him and change and all. <laughs> and yes, they even throw in a reference to uh, Scrooge, yeah, the Bill Murray comedy, and all these other... Charles Dickens' uh, adaptations. <laughs> I love that. So, of course, as they perform, you know, they're going to be visited by free spirits. But at this rate, uh, Clint ends up seducing the Bonnie. <laughs> and she was wearing the, the, the white uh, coat and all. But it was forcing Prezen to take over for sure. So that's where they started visiting... Uh, Clint's um, past memories when he was a kid. Yeah, where he was in his bedroom. Yeah, you can spot uh, the the Smurfs um, glass frame and all. And and yes, they were even watching uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas, even though it was just a frame of Charlie Brown while they were playing the music uh, by Vince Guaraldi. Nice touch, though, considering the fact that all of of the Peanuts game specials and shows and, and movies are on Apple TV Plus. <laughs> yeah. And I know they're doing their originals too. <laughs> okay. Well, this kind of leads to um, his change uh, when he was a little kid because his mom was going to give him a puppy for Christmas, but it turns out he only got the, the dog dish. And his older sister, uh, Carrie, also played by Marla Barkley, who will soon be played by Andrea Anders as an adult. Um, he actually uh, stood up against her. And eventually they ran away because, yes, um, their mom was ready to attack him. She was very drunk and, and selfish and stubborn. So that kind of leads to his adult life, too, when, especially at the, the local shopping mall, where he has his ex-girlfriend, uh, Nora, who's played by Amy Carrero. They just broke up um, while they were with uh, uh, his brother, uh, along with uh, their niece and, and, yes, Carrie, and their mom, too, and, yeah, it just... Because he made a a scene, like a, a, he was being very selfish and self-centered and all. And to make matters worse, I mean, it kind of leads to the fact that Carrie is now, has a terminal illness at the hospital. And she was planning to have um, Clint to raise uh, Wren. But instead... He decided to um, have his brother uh, raised her instead because um, he just didn't feel the need to. And, and it's sad too because she later died. So at that rate, um, it can only lead to one thing, to actually uh, learn his lesson. Roberto had took Clint to his uh, pass. Which then we now learn his dark secret that all this time, this is the big one, he was Ebenezer Scrooge himself. Crazy, isn't it? And probably the most insult of them all was, and I know it sounds pretty silly, 
but at his past time because everything has their own set of uh, coarse language and all and and a lot of uh, profanity and everything like that well there's not much profanity in this movie but but you get the idea but the only profanity that he knows of is good afternoon <laughs> That's the only insult that they had was good afternoon. I mean, come on. That sounds more like nicer than ever before, but I can sense they use good afternoon like it's a sarcastic remark. I mean, hey, we had the word good day, sir, or madam, or all. But wow, I mean, good afternoon? <laughs> oh, that's just crazy. So, of course, song and dance number. I, I love that scene where Clint was just, you know, using a <laughs> so sort of a British thick accent that he was going for while singing the song, Good Afternoon, to join in with, <laughs> with Roberto, known as Scrooge. Marley eventually became furious and orders uh, present to stick to the script exactly as they, they were told to while Clint had to be sent to bed. <laughs> so anyway, Roberto uh, brings Clint to Nora, who is happily celebrating Christmas uh, with her husband and kids. But he, but he deduced for for Roberto longing for a happy family life that he's been dreaming about all this time. So maybe they'll find a way to finally fix this this uh, situation. And soon he'll be able to change by having Clint uh, begin to have Roberto, you know, marry Kimberly. You know, they'll be together. They'll they'll just they'll fall in love. They'll get to know each other, and try to stop uh, Wen from sending the the video that he's go she's going to post while they were skating. <clears throat> yeah, so that way nothing bad will happen. So for sure. And then there's going to be another time where, where I guess Clint now has to help Roberto out because things are just not going so well. I mean, even though it was going great, I mean, now he's he's becoming human again, and you know, sometimes he's getting used to not being a ghost, and he's just going around at his apartment, you know, relaxing. He's taking a shower and and all that stuff inside his uh, place. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, he has a wonderful place. I mean, who would have thought for some jerk of an executive, he would have such a beautiful uh, apartment complex, for sure. <laughs> so a after that, though, um, they were hoping that, or at least that's what he was hoping, that they were going to become bros, you know, together, and then finally have Roberto go back to Kimberly so they can fall in love have the dream that they wanted, but then then there's an accident that occurs while they were doing another dance number, hoping that they'll show up for sure, and they took so damn long. But now, Clint finally uh, got the job to take over after he about to save uh, Roberto's life. So yeah, he got run over by a bus, and now... He finally met his sister, Carrie, so now they're all alone, along with the rest of the spirits and the entire team. So now he's taking over the business to help out all the others of Ball. So things will get even better for him while Roberto now has a family life. And things are going well, too. <laughs> and there's more musical numbers to join. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> This is really uh, very special right here for for Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds and and this is great that Apple TV Plus have finally uh, did something great for a change uh, for movies. It's also hilarious, joyful, and fun all the way around, and perfect time to watch it during the Christmas season, especially this year. And yeah, it's, it's a two-hour and seven-minute long 
for the running time of the story, but that's okay. I mean, for that particular running time, it, it works. Because that means there's going to be more to follow. Um, but Will Ferrell is just hilarious. Um, as the role of uh, Ghost of Christmas Presents, and Roberto, Ebenezer Scrooge, and all that. And Ryan Reynolds is just you know, terrific playing a sarcastic uh, jerk of, of a uh, media consultant trying to change his ways too. So I, I figure there was going to be a lot of references to Scrooge, but there's also a reference to uh, Elf. <laughs> because after all, Will Ferrell did play Elf, as we know. In that one scene too, when they were at a party, yeah. Office Christmas party with everyone around. Yeah, one of them did dress up as the elf. Yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Um, and they got a lot of special effects in the movie, too. I mean, well done for, for this particular uh, movie and comedy. And the music, uh, all these songs, um, besides that Christmas morning feeling, we got Presents, Lamet, Bring It Back Christmas, The Story of Your Life, which is Marley's Haunt, um, the story of your life, that was Clint's Pritch, and <laughs> the view from here, and so many of them. They're, they're all done by um, Benji Pazak and Justin Paul, but the score was done by Dominic Lewis, so it gives it that more haunting, but also cheerful uh, songs to, to go for. <laughs> And even though if they throw some other jokes around, even ones that are demented and sarcastic and all, um, you know, there's like funny moments uh, with uh, um, <laughs> with the ghosts of Christmas yet to come. Tracy Morgan, you know, just getting tired of doing all this, but I know he's he's wisecracking all the time, and even though he doesn't speak as much. <laughs> um, or the fact that we have uh, the director, who's the girl, and she's like quirky and all. And one of the, the crews, which has the, the black guy who's like criticizing um, the musical. Like he doesn't like it at first, he's tired of it, but then he's starting to get used to it. <laughs> yeah. And yes, there's even a scene with Jimmy Fallon... Unfunny as usual. But there's even him dancing too. But I guess this was at the scene when, when uh, Clint was just watching him on his uh, phone. Yeah, because that's where we get to see the message pop up. <laughs> All that stuff. Uh, so <laughs> there's there's just a lot of that going on in the movie and and the way they keep changing sets here and there. Like when they try to get to to their past memories and all that stuff. Uh, they always keep changing all the sets here and there. It's it, Indeed, it's like like they're filming the, a musical adaptation. It feels like that too. Like they're just filming this like, like it's one particular program. So they had all the other crews and, and all the set designers around just moving back and forward. And then, then sometimes they transition to one scene to the other. With all the CGI effects and then all this other ones that are moving around. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, a tip. Anyway, back to the cast. I mean, Activia Spencer is great as always, too, as Kimberly. Definitely the perfect love interest for Roberto, even though he's assistant for Clint. <laughs> um, and the rest of the cast were great, too. I mean, given what they're, what they're playing. I mean, even a cameo with Judy Dance just making an appearance um, during the the uh, the Scrooge bits, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, it, it's really cool that they were doing all that. I mean, it's haunting at times, but it can. It's also insane, and yes, sometimes they even throw in some random jokes uh, that just. Seems so out of place. I mean, yes, they even mentioned the pandemic. They mentioned about other fans going around. I mean, it's all over stuff with with a, a joy and an excitement going around. But 
nevertheless, uh, um, hey, it's 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 an enjoyable for a comedy, and and, and it was just really nice to see a uh, Pharaoh and and uh, Reynolds together in one movie. I mean, the I guess in some cases it's it sort of seemed like a bit of uh, the movie uh, Free Guy in a way. I mean, when it comes to some of those crazy uh, scenes showing up or what or what's happening around, only it's done in the spirit of the Charles Dickens class. And I know they also throw in a lot of, uh, or maybe a few of them, of, of profanity. So, <laughs> whatever. Okay, I mean, but for its 75th million budget, I mean, this, you can see it on the screen all the way. <laughs> That's the movie Spirited, and I give the movie... Four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and good afternoon. Bye.